Naram Chaiva Narottamam Devim Sarasatim Vyasam Tato Jayam Udirayat Nasta Prashu Vapadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtaki So today, as we heard, this is Akshaya Tritya. It's also the first day of Chandan Yatra. This is, you know, very warm in India this time of the year, especially Vrindavan. So Chandan Yatra, we will like to put Chandan on the deities. Cover the deities in Chanda, and you will see in Mayapur, Vrindavan, you will see how the deities are dressed, put Chanda and is put over their bodies. <coughs> Akshaya Tritya, it's a, an occasion for beginning new ventures. Sometimes we open a temple on that day. Akshaya Tritya. Have a nice new temple. Maybe Akshaya Tritya is an auspicious day. Couples often get married on Akshaya Tritya. People like to open their business on Akshaya Tritya. And of course, people buy gold also on Akshaya Tritya. There's always a big line at the gold merchants and jewelers. People think they'll bring good fortune to themselves on this day. So we should understand the real wealth is not in money, paper money or gold. The real wealth is in cultivating our devotion. For the Supreme Lord Krishna. And Prahlad Maharaj is explaining like that to his, to his friends who are from the Guru Kula. We have these nice young men here, good candidates for Guru Kula. The younger, the better, right? Komar Acharit Prakma. Komar. From the beginning of life, the first five years of life is called the Komar stage. So if we get the good training in the beginning, then it's so much easier to become Krishna conscious. If we don't get the good training in the beginning, we develop the bad training. We get, we get the bad training, we, we do all the nonsense things, right? Prabhupada said, no nonsense, no meat, fish, eggs, no intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex, no nonsense. People are full of, they're very fond of nonsense. Foolish activities. Foolish activities means acts against the principles of religion. Srimad Bhagavatam says, Nunam Pramata Kulte Vikarma Yadendriya Pritai Aprinoti Nasadu Manye Yat Atmanoyam Sanapi Kleshada Ashadeha. Nunam Pramata, because of madness. Oh, Krishna. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Where did this come from? Here? All right. 
because of madness people do mad they're so mad and because they're so mad they do a lot of sinful activities vikarma there is karma akarma and vikarma karma means acts for our sense gratification we want to enjoy the material world akarma is where we act for the pleasure of the supreme lord means no reaction that is the acts of devotion when we do activities for the service of the lord there are no reactions that is called akarma but when we act against the principles of scripture that is vikarma and we do these activities because of madness we're mad for material enjoyment we're mad to satisfy to satisfy the tongue the belly the genitals we want to enjoy the material body and we act in all the foolish ways so Shastra said, Nasadu manye yata atmano yam asanapi kleshada ashtadeha. So klesha means troubles. You get a lot of troubles. Shastra said, that is not good, my friend. Because of all these sinful activities, you're going to have to take another birth in the material world and bring a lot of trouble onto yourself this is a problem material life is full of problems it's a problem to take birth nowadays a lot of people a lot of couples they conceive a child and then they decide they don't want the child and they will go for abortion so many children are aborted every day it's so common i'm very glad to hear that in kuwait it's not done but in india we know it's common in america in all these other countries it's very common in china very common women Go for abortion not once not twice, many times it, this is kali yuga people are so ignorant they don't think about the responsibility they just think oh i don't want another child oh i don't want a child kill it this is the thinking so this kind of ignorance is there because people are not educated they're not educated in spiritual values and that education should be given at the beginning of life even before birth that education should be given the mother and the father should understand the responsibility of bringing a child into the world and they should want to produce a good child right you're going to have children we want quality children how to get quality children you have to do some scars I was with Srila Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj in Dubai. I remember him telling all the devotees there. He said, you have to do samskar, you have to do garbhadan samskar. That means at the time of conceiving the child, you do it in God consciousness by chanting the holy name. And in this way, you make a nice 
situation to attract a pure soul into the womb. I was preaching in the Philippines to one man and I was explaining to him about how you can do Garbhadan Samskar and you can attract a pure soul into the womb and have nice children. He said to me, he said, oh, if only I'd known this before. He said, I never, he said, I've got seven children. I never knew about this. <laughs> All the children were conceived, you know, without any samskar. And so the result is you don't get very good results. You get children who are very attached to sense gratification. But if you do that, if you do samskar, you can attract a nice soul. Bhagavad Gita describes fallen yogis, they will take birth in the womb of devotees. Someone who is not quite perfect, but who's practiced yoga for a long time, but still not perfect, they will take birth in the family of devotees. And then very quickly, they'll become perfect and can go back to Godhead. So Prahlad Maharaj had the opportunity to be born in the womb of a woman who was married to the king of the demons, Haranyakashipu. So the wife was fortunate that at one point the demigods wanted to kill her but Narada Muni pleaded with them and he told the demigods you cannot harm this child. The demigods were thinking we want to kill this child because he's the son of a demon so he'll be a big demon also so we'll kill him as soon as he's born. Narada Muni told him, no that's not right. You don't know. This child is going to be a devotee and you won't be able to harm him because he's protected by the Supreme Lord. We see some examples of this just like Parikshit. Parikshit Maharaj was the grandson of Arjuna, the son of Abhimanu and his wife Uttara. Parikshit was born in the womb of Uttara. Ashwatthama, the son of Drona, threw the Brahmastra weapon. He wanted to kill the child. He'd already, Ashwatthama killed all the sons of Draupadi. In their sleep, he came and killed the five sons of Draupadi. that Parikshit was the only survivor of the Pandavas. He wanted to kill through Brahmastra weapon. Lord Krishna protected him. The Brahmastra weapon, the body, Lord Krishna replaced the body. The same soul, Lord Krishna gave a new body, protected him from the blazing heat of the Brahmastra weapon. So Lord Krishna says, Kunti apriti janihi nami bhakta pranashati. My devotee will never perish. Parikshit was saved. In the same way, Prahlad Maharaj, because Prahlad was devotee to the Lord, no harm could come to him. Haranyakashipu, his demonic father, tried to kill him in so many ways. But in every situation, Prahlad was saved. Haranyakashipu had him thrown off a mountain, but Prahlad landed on the soft ground. Haranyakashipu had Prahlad thrown into the middle of the ocean. But the ocean carried Prahlad back onto the shore. 
Harani Kashipu had Prahlad put in a well full of deadly poisonous cobra. But the cobras could not bite Prahlad because Prahlad as the Lord in his heart. And that same Lord is in the heart of all the cobras. And he would not allow the cobras to bite Prahlad. So Prahlad had that. He tried to understand. Prahlad did not pray for any protection. But he just simply remembered Krishna. In every situation, he remembered the Lord. And no harm came to him. So that is the way of devotion of service. A devotee does not want to take service from Krishna. We want to give service to Krishna. And Prahlad never asked Krishna for protection. He never prayed to Krishna, Oh, help me. Oh, Krishna, I'm suffering. Oh, Krishna, save me. No. Prahlad just remembered Krishna. And he was saved. No harm could come to him. Of course, it's a very advanced level of devotion. We want to understand how advanced, what a wonderful devotee Prahlad Maharaj is. So Prahlad got education. He did not get good association. You know, sometimes the parents think, oh, I don't want to send my child to the school. They'll have to go to the school with all the other killed children who are meat eaters. I don't want them to associate with all these other children. But Prahlad, he went to school with all non-devotees. They were the children of Asuras. But Prahlad did not get affected by them. Prahlad preached to them. Right? Prahlad was able to talk to them, the other children, and tell them about Krishna. Right? So this is important. We want our children also to grow up like Prahlad. To tell people about Krishna and not to be influenced by other people. But we want to influence them. Right? We want to give Krishna to them, not take Maya from them. We want to give them Krishna. So Prahlad was able to do that. He is telling his friends about the problems of material life. How in material life no one is happy. Everyone is working hard and they're so anxious to get money, to get more money. And they're thinking with money they will satisfy their senses. But Prahlad is telling his friends that money doesn't solve problems. The money just simply brings more problems. People become more attached. They become more blind to the real purpose of life. Prahlad Maharaj is the teacher. He is opening the eyes of the other boys in the school. He wants them to see the truth. Just like we offer prayers to the spiritual teacher, we say, Om Ajnana Timarandasya, Gyananjana Shalak, that I was born in the darkest ignorance, Agyana, Timarandasya, in the darkest ignorance, right? So that was our condition. 
But we met the spiritual teacher who opened our eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. So knowledge, spiritual knowledge is very powerful and it burns up all the reactions to our past activities. Just like a fire burns wood to ashes, so transcendental knowledge is like a fire and it can burn up all the reactions of our past activities. Because of our past activities, we are born into a particular condition. Our body is a reaction of our past activities. Somebody has a, maybe you're born in a rich family, that's because of your good activity. And somebody is poor, that is the reactions from our bad activity. Somebody gets good education, somebody is good looking, somebody is healthy. These are all reasons, these are all results of good activities. And somebody has not got these things, you're not healthy, your education is very poor, you're not so good looking, these are reactions from our past, from our bad. So everything is depending on our past activities. We're put into this situation. This body is called Karma Kshetra. Karma Kshetra, right? You heard of Kuru Kshetra. The body is Karma Kshetra, the field of work. The field of work. Now we're earning our future body by the activities, by the work which we do in this body now, it will bear the results in the future. Just like if you're a farmer and if you want to grow beans, you have to plant the seeds of beans. If you want to grow melons, you have to plant the seeds of melons. You cannot expect to grow beans from melons. So, in India they say, Jaisa karega, Aisa barega. <laughs> really? You get the results of your work that come. Now that is interesting, that saying is there everywhere. Even in China, people don't believe in God. There's no God in Chinese culture or Chinese philosophy. They never believed in God in thousands of years. And today they're communists and they say we have no God, no religion. But they say also that in Chinese they say Shan Yo Shan Bao, Er uh, Yo Er uh, Bao. You know, you know Chinese? You know, you don't know Chinese. It's a Chinese thing. There are many idiomatic expressions in Chinese, and this is one of them. It means you do good activities, you you get good results. You do bad activities, you get bad results. The Christian Bible says the same thing: as you sow, so shall you reap. If you sow the seeds of sin you will reap sinful reactions. If you sow the seeds of punya, pious activities, you'll get good reactions. So everything depends on the way we work. Prahlad Maharaj is telling to his friends that we should not waste our time just trying to solve the temporary problems of the material world. Don't spend your time just trying to get money. Oh, we need some money, we have to live. But that is not the real focus of life. You have to balance material life 
along with spiritual life. Just like the train goes on two tracks. There's the material, there is the spirit. Now when the tracks are level, it's okay. The tracks are not level, train will turn over. Train climbs, turns over because the tracks are not level. So if you put too much focus on the material and you neglect the spiritual, you get problems. That is for sure. Because you're only thinking materially. And the material body is temporary. Your assets are all material. They're finished with the body. Right? What can you do with them? At the end of with Kalihat Ayate, Kalihat Chilo. <laughs> right? You come with nothing in the world, you leave with nothing. What are you going what but you take your karma with you? You take your some scars. What things vasanas, you know, these things which you keeping in the heart. You take them with you to the next life. We have to be very careful. We are preparing for the future life now. Often common people, they only think about enjoying now. Let, they don't think about the future. Parents will always tell the children, oh no, you have to work, you have to do the homework, you have to study, we want you to grow up, to get a, a good job, to think of the future. Parents also have to think of the future because they also have a future. We're getting older, we're going to leave the body one day. Next life you have to take birth, like, where do you want to go? Where do you want to go from here? Oh, I don't know. I don't care. Oh, okay. Then it doesn't matter, does it? There's a story which we often read in English. It's called Alice in Wonderland. And it tells about a little girl named Alice who went into the Wonderland. And she got in the Wonderland and then she came in the main entrance and she said, where do I go from here? So they said to her, where do you want to go? And she said, oh, I don't really know. So then they said, well, it doesn't matter which way you go, does it? So if you don't mind to be an animal in the next life, if you don't mind to be a pig or a dog, then okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Srila Prabhupada was in America, and this young American boy, young man, he was say, saying to Prabhupada, he said, oh, I think the dogs have a good time, you know. They're playing all day, running around, barking at each other, and fighting with the other dogs. I think they have a good. Prabhupada said, Okay, you have my blessings. Go, become a dog. <laughs> You know, if coming from India, you can understand the dog life is not very attractive. It is not very prestigious, you know. <laughs> of course, people are, are so blind and so ignorant today that they worship dogs, you know. We see them carry their dogs and, you know. You know, the things they do with the dogs, they care more for the dogs. You know, they, they kill the babies in the womb, but they, they worship the dog. This is the, the darkness of ignorance, the age of Kali. How people are so blind and so thoughtless. So we're trying to awaken people to see the truth. Prahlad Maharaj was doing the same thing millions of years ago in the Satya Yuga. Even in the Satya Yuga, there were ignorant people. They were called Asuras. And they were just in ignorance. They just wanted to 
destroy the material body. But Prahlad Maharaj got the young boys in his Gurukula from his class and he talked to them and he told them about the real business in life. That the real business in life is to understand a real self, who I am. It's very basic, but it's very important. If we get that wrong, then you never come to the right answer. You have to get it right in the beginning. If you make a mistake in the beginning, then the error will be there all the way through. You never get the right answer. So the very first thing is to understand our identity as a spiritual being, that we're not the body. Of course, we spend all of our time and money on the body. They have the body shop, right? Go and buy all the cream and the soap and the shampoo and all the things for the skin. The shopping, it's all for the body. The skin and the hair and the nails. Oh, yeah. Where is the shop for the soul? Where are we going to get the information about our real self? For that, you have to come to the Krishna consciousness people. You have to come and hear. People in this age, they want everything very cheap. They think, oh, I'll just pay some money and I'll, I'll get all the power of the Guru. I'll get all the blessings. I'll just pay some money. It's so, it will be that easy. It's not that easy. The teacher comes and he said, you have to follow the discipline. You have to accept the teachings. It's not just give some money. That's not the solution. You have to follow the message, the teaching. So the guru comes and he's telling people, no meat, fish and eggs. People, oh, 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 that's enough. Oh, no, no, this guru is no good. I don't want. They cannot follow. They're so uncontrolled in their senses. They cannot follow. So unfortunate. Guru said, you have to chant Hare Krishna mantra. And say, okay, how many times? What? 16 rounds? Why so many rounds? Why not one round? Three rounds? No good. You have to chant minimum 16 rounds to get connected to the Guru, to get some connection. So, people in Kali Yuga, very lazy, very stubborn, unlucky, unfortunate. We try to help them, they don't want to follow, they don't want to take advantage. Prahlad Maharaj was telling his friends, they also have to chant, they have to, they should become brahmacharya, they should get that good training at the beginning of life. From the young boy, young men, young boys, these boys, is it the good time to get the good training? And then it will make the impression on them throughout their life that they will know to do these things, right? Sometimes a young girl, she wants a, a young man for a husband and she will, what is she looking for when she looks for a husband? She's like, how much money has he got? What kind of job has he got? How much is he making? You know, they think like, you know, how much bank balance he's got? What kind of...
Man, is he going to give me to live in? The girl was thinking, they're not thinking, is he good brahmachari? No woman thinks like that, right? They're not thinking, is he, is he cultured? Is he, edge, is he trained to control the mind and senses? No. They're only thinking, how many digits has he got in the bank? <laughs> this is a, the ignorance, Kali Yuga. Why are people unhappy in the material life? Because they're only thinking about money and the body and sense gratification, how to enjoy. They don't understand the real nature of life. That happiness comes not just from the body, not just from money. Real happiness comes from controlling the mind and senses. People in this Kali Yuga are all disturbed. They don't have peace of mind. What do I to do to get peace of mind? Oh, go to doctor. Oh, doctor, I have no peace of mind. Oh, okay, okay. Go to chemist shop, get the medicine, take the medicine. Hopeless. That is not going to give you peace of mind. How to get peace of mind? Krishna gives a formula, Bhagavad Gita. How to get peace of mind? Bhoktaram yagna tapasham sarvaloka maheshwaram suridam sarvabhutanam gyadvamam shantim richad. You want peace of mind? You have to know three things. You have to know Lord Krishna is the supreme proprietor. Everything belongs to him. Nothing is mine. I said, Kalehataiti? <laughs> what is mine? It's not ours. Where did it come from? It's all his. Belongs to him. And he is the enjoyer. We we're thinking, I want to enjoy. We are meant to be enjoyed by Krishna. That way we will be happy. Lord Krishna is the enjoyer. Everything belongs to him. It's for his enjoyment. Then the third thing we have to know, he is the best friend. We have forgotten our friendship with him. We're looking other people, is this my friend? Maybe she's my friend. Maybe this one's my friend. We're looking, trying to find a friend. The real friend is with us, waiting for us to turn to him. He Suridam Sarva Bhuta. He's the best of friends. He's not just Dost or Mitra or but he's the very best of he's with us all the time, birth after birth. You know, we grow up, when you're a child, you have friends. You go to college, you have a different friend. You get married, you have different friends. And you get old, the different friends. Friends come and go. But that one friend is always with us. Lord Sri Krishna, the Lord in the heart. He's with us and he's guiding us. As Paramatma, he's guiding us. Bhagavad Gita said, Paramatma is an upadrasta, an anumanta, the overseer and the permitter. He's watching us, looking after us, telling us. He's telling us, chant Hare Krishna. And we're saying, no. <laughs> we don't want, but we're rebellious. We turn away from Krishna. Lord is in the heart. The Lord said, don't go to the party. Don't go and drink alcohol. We said, no, I'm going to do it anyway. We don't listen to Krishna. He's in the heart. He's telling us. Are we hearing? We don't hear. We pretend not to hear. He's there with us. He's telling us again and again to remind us what is our real duty, our real business in life. But we ignore him. 
Just like sometimes the mother will tell her child, don't do this, don't do that. The child doesn't listen and gets problems. We are like that. We are like these children. We are not hearing the Lord instruct us and direct us. So we have to learn to hear from the heart, the, the speaking, how Krishna, how God in the heart is speaking to us and telling us. Just like <laughs> there's a, there was this one man, he had a talk to God and he told, he told God, he said, I'll go with you, but you have to tell me ahead of time so that I can go with you. So the Lord said, okay, yeah, I'll tell you. And so after some time, the man died. And so the man was saying to God, he said, look, I, you were supposed to tell me, why, how you let, you, you, you let me die? And you didn't tell me. But the, the Lord said, no, look, I told you. Look, I told you. Look at all your gray hair. Look at all your wrinkles. Can you see you were old? I was telling you. You were not hearing. And so we have that problem. You know, the Lord is telling us. We see everybody die. My grandfather's dead. My father's dead. And we're thinking, I won't die. So many generations before us have all died. One day it will be our turn, right? We're in the line and the line is moving. It's not more, you know, people are all coming and going. And one day we will also go. Krishna says, Bhagavad Gita, Jatasya hi dravamrichu dravam janma mritasya cha. For one who is dead, one who is one who one who has taken birth, one who has taken birth has to die, and one who is dead will take birth again. So where do we want to take our next birth? Where are we going to go? We have to prepare for that. Prahlad Maharaj is telling the, the boys in his class, we have a relationship with the Lord and we can go there and be with him in the spiritual world, in the Goloka, in the Vaikuntha. This world is Kuntha. It's all anxiety, all anxiety here in this world. We have to prepare ourselves to go to the spiritual world. So Lord Krishna inspires Prahlad to give his teachings to people. Lord Krishna inspires Prahlad to teach how to become God conscious by his own example, by controlling the mind and senses and seeing the Lord in everyone, in everything. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, for one who sees me everywhere and sees everything in me, I am never lost to him, nor is he ever lost to me. So those who are in devotion, they can see the Lord in everyone, in everything. That is spiritual vision. We have vision, we're only seeing externally. We're not seeing the real spirit, the real nature. We only see the external, the covering of the body, just like the material body. This body is not such a beautiful thing, but we cover it, we dress it, we make it look nice. But what is the nature of the body? 
You look below the skin, blood, bones, veins, oh, horrible things. You cut open the body, it's horrible, it's disgusting, it's just a bag. But the bag is decorated, the bag looks very nice. Inside the bag, horrible. But outside the bag, very nice. So we get, we fall in illusion. Prahlad Maharaj, he's understood this and he's warning his friends, don't get much attached to the material things. Yes, we have to have a family, we take care of our family, we should not neglect them, but we have to understand that these things are temporary. We come together and we will separate in course of time. We have had many families. You can read how there was this one king, Chitraketu, and he wanted so much to have a child. So he got the blessings of Angira, and Narada and his wife finally conceived a child and the child was born but the other wives were all jealous because they had no child so they gave poison to that one child and the child died and when the child died then the king was very broken hearted it was very painful so Narada came again and they brought the child back to life. And they asked the child, where are you going? Why are you leaving? And the child began to speak and said that, I've come here for some time. My time here in this family is over. Now I'm going another place. They said, what about your mother and father? He said, I've had many mothers and fathers. Who is, he said, who is my mother and father? Every time we take birth, we have a mother and father. So who is my mother and father? It is the attachment to the skin. We're thinking, my child. We're thinking, my wife my husband. This is the ahankar, aham and mamiti. I am the body, this is mine. But what is actually ours? Nothing is ours. Everything belongs to God. It's meant for his service. If you remember those three things, Krishna is the proprietor. He is the enjoyer, he is the best friend, our very best friend. Then we'll always be peaceful, we'll be happy. But when we're not remembering this, that's why we're not peaceful. That's why we're in anxiety and in illusion, stress, so many problems people have. Even little children. I was in Singapore. And one family, their little daughter, a young girl, came home from school. They gave her a booklet, Help, Helping Your Child Cope With Stress. You know, eight-year-old child with stress. <laughs> we have the cure to overcome stress. Simply chant Hare Krishna and be happy. Chanting Hare Krishna, hearing some Bhagavad Kata, and taking Krishna Prasada. Then there are no more problems. All the problems are solved when you start to chant Hare Krishna. Just like the darkness goes as soon as you turn on the light. So, Krishna Surya Sam, Maya Haya, and the Krishna is like the sun. Wherever there is Krishna, there's no darkness. 
there can be no ignorance. All the ignorance is taken away by the light of Krishna. And Krishna is there. He speaks the Bhagavad Gita. His message is there in Srimad Bhagavatam. Krishna is there in the deity. Krishna is there as the holy name. You chant his name and you can be with Krishna. We want to take advantage of the holy name, chanting the holy name. Very important for us. Just by chanting, you can have self-realization. You can understand a real spiritual nature. It all comes about as soon as you begin to chant. So this chanting process is very important. In the Kali Yuga, there's no other way. Not by karma, not by jnana, not by yoga, only by the holy name. We have to chant. And of course, there are some rules to be followed in chanting. Just like we say, you have to follow the orders of the spiritual teacher. Means you should eat prasada, don't eat other things. You should read the Bhagavatam every day, try to read a little bit. You may not read very much, but try to read something, try to hear. And you have children, you have a home, chant, do kirtan in your home. Help your children to become God conscious. Even you don't put them in the Gurukula to become brahmacharya, at least you have to have kirtan at home and you have to teach them about Krishna. That is very important. So giving people Krishna consciousness begins with your own family and you have to begin with your own self. Be an example for the family. Show them to chant Hare Krishna. Children should see us chanting, should chant, and then they will also want to chant. If children see you watching Bollywood movies every day, they'll also watch the movies. We have to show the example. So teaching by example, that is how we understand. This is why brahmacharya training is good. Because then they get association with the Guru and the Guru will teach them how to chant Hare Krishna. He will teach them how to act in Krishna consciousness. It's not difficult if you follow. It's okay. So Krishna Consciousness is natural, it's there in everyone. We just have to awaken it. Prabhupada gives an example, young child, when they're born, they cannot walk. But as they start to grow, they learn to walk. It takes some practice, but they can do it. In the same way, we can also become Krishna Conscious. We have to just simply practice. And that practice is there. Under the guidance of a spiritual teacher, you learn to chant the Hare Krishna mantra and to hear about Krishna. Books are there. We have so many books about Lord Krishna in all the different languages. People say, I have no time, I'm very busy, I'm working 12 hours a day. Yes, it's true, many people are. But if something is important, you will do it. 
Just like you want to eat, you can say, oh, I have no time, I'm working so hard, I have no time to eat. Well, I have to eat, I have to eat, I have to get food. I, how I can keep working if I don't eat? And the, you have to sleep, you have to get some rest, right? You may not get 10 hours rest, but if you get 5 hours rest, okay, you're not doing bad. 4 hours, 5 hours, you can manage. 6 hours, you're very lucky. <laughs> and you've still got time. And in the course of the day, you've got time. You may be working, you can be chanting. We can always remember Krishna. Right? Some people are driving. When you're driving, you can be chanting. You can put slokas above on the top of the car and recite slokas. You can be doing many things. We just have to use our intelligence so that we can remember Krishna. Train our mind to remember Krishna. It is said, always remember Krishna and never forget. That is the essence of all the scriptures. So we have to train our mind that we can remember Krishna. Then we take some practice, just habit. We get a habit, wake up in the morning, clean the teeth, take a shower. It's a habit. The same way, we have to get the habit to chant Hare Krishna every day, to chant to worship Krishna, read the books about Krishna. Everyone agree? How many of you are chanting every day then? Oh, my goodness, so many. Very good. How many are initiating? Okay, not so many. So, you all, initiation begins by chanting Hare Krishna mantra. You chant Hare Krishna. You have to prepare yourself. You have to understand how to select a spiritual teacher. You have to hear. Hearing is the process. You have to hear and you have to be convinced that this person can help me. And then you know that person, he can be your spiritual teacher. But you have to hear for some time. Bhagavad Gita describes how to approach. Tadvadi pranipatena pari prashnena sevaya. Right? You have to approach humbly pranipatena, you fall down. In pari prashnena, you have to put questions, you have to inquire. And then seva, you have to do service. And you have to find the person who can convince you, who can tell you the truth. Just like Pramad, he could convince the boys. He could convince them, everyone. He was concerned to deliver. The, he, he told, I said, I'm not worried about myself. Wherever I go, I can chant Hare Krishna. I'm happy. But I'm worried about all the other people who have no Krishna consciousness. I want to help them. I want to give them spiritual knowledge. So Srila Prabhupada also taught us like that, that we should try to distribute Krishna consciousness everywhere. Give everyone a chance to hear about Krishna and to chant the holy name. Okay, Hare Krishna, are there any questions? Anything? Okay. Thank you.
Yes, Hare Krishna. Uh, if you look at the absolute truth in life, so probably the first thing that comes to your mind is that that is absolutely uh, the respect of who you are, where you live. That's uh, uh, in the material world, the, the, uh, the passing away of the body is the, the absolute truth, it's not everything. And so, uh, as humans, why don't we celebrate that? When we know that that's the only certain why do we feel sad and the we feel positive, even in this call, even in Krishna consciousness, where we prepare for our death, how could our depart from Sadhira life? So why don't we celebrate? Why don't we celebrate? Yes. <laughs> when we depart from the body? Yes. What we do? We do celebrate when we depart from the body. At least the person who's departing from the body, he's happy. He's celebrating, he's happy. The people, other people, they may be lamenting, oh, he's crying, he's leaving us. But the person who's leaving the body, he's happy. If he's Krishna conscious, you know, he's happy. He knows where he's going. He's going to be with Krishna. And we do celebrate, you know, we, we have a, what is called Smriti Sabha. After somebody departs, a few days later, we will have a gathering of all the people who knew him, and we'll meet together, and we will discuss the nature of the person. We'll remember the qualities and pastimes and events which took place in our relationship with him. And in this way, we'll all give our blessings for the departed soul, that he will progress back to Krishna. So it's a celebration. Someone leaves the body, they're going back to be with Krishna. Special, a devotee we will celebrate. Because I mean, we know a devotee is going to go further, nearer to Krishna. So it's a cause for celebration. And we will pray, we'll give our blessings that he will be able to go smoothly on his journey back to the kingdom of God. Thank you, Mahārāj. Uh, I have one more question. I want to take time off for uh, maybe someone else. Uh, uh, I just uh, completely separate question, Mahārāj. So since uh, you mentioned you preach so much in China, so I just, uh, and, uh, I believe Prabhupada was mentioning that I think some of the lecture you mentioned about your experiences of uh, the difficulties that you faced while preaching in China. So just wanted to know a bit of your experience, Mahārāj. Well, you want to know about my difficulties? Uh, the experience is not a, it's a different culture, so just uh, to understand uh, um, what you went through, what you experienced in China. Well, like everywhere else in the world, you know, people are atheistic, they're lazy, they're stubborn. Yeah. Generally, China people don't believe in God. Some countries, it's not so bad. Like in, in Russia, everyone believes in God. But in China, nobody believes in God. Because it's indoctrinated into them. Marxism. Karl Marx wrote about religion as the opium of the people. He said the opium of the people, that's a drug. But actually, you should understand, it's actually a good thing for the people. Religion is very important for the people. If they don't have rel religious training, then they don't have any good culture. And they don't develop good qualities and morality. It's very difficult for them to keep up any standards of morality or cleanliness, or truthfulness, the culture, principles, good character. People don't think about it. They only think money, materialistic society. The only based on, only thought is money, and they'll do anything for the money. They'll sell the soul for money. So, 
even the China government themselves, they're trying to educate people. They want people to be good character and to be moral and so on. But it's very difficult because they don't have that culture. They don't have religious training. So they don't understand how these qualities are related to a religious culture. When you have a religious culture, then people will develop good qualities. But where people are atheistic and no religious belief, then you see all the bad qualities develop. Yes, Prabhu, you have a question? Thank you very much for enlightening us. Uh, you have been uh, imparting us uh, knowledge from Chul, from Black Bharat, but all the time it is as if we inspire this more and more. So, Maharaj, when we take this knowledge, Gyan, then uh, as Prabhupada says, we have to convert it to Vigyan, like uh, apply in our lives. But uh, that doesn't go 100% into application. So it's like as Lord Krishna says, uh, that fully focus on what I have learned, what I learned from Prabhupada's books, what I learned from Maharajas and what I learned from other devotees, I apply in my life. That Vyasatmika Buddhi 100% how it will come Maharaj, what is the way out of this? That whatever we hear, we, we just change our life and apply. Fully. How can we done that? Well, it's not just simply hearing and automatically everybody will change. But if you have the right association and you see the right example from others, you, see, you have to hear from the right people and you have to see the example from them also. If they simply speak one thing and do another, it will not have any effect. Just like the teacher says, don't smoke. But the students say, but teacher, you're smoking. And so teacher saying, no, no, don't smoke. But the teacher smokes, his fingers are all brown, smoking cigarettes, and he's telling people not to smoke. So that kind of teaching is useless. So the teaching has to come from the proper in the proper ah, through the authorized teachers and they have to teach but they also show the example themselves by how they live they convince that I want to follow like the association of some sadhus they came to the place where he was staying with his mother and he saw their example and he became attracted to them. So the same way people will, some people, people will be attracted, they'll want to follow the good thing. Do you see birds of a feather come together? So people of one nature, they will attract people of a similar nature. If one has a godly nature, he can attract other people and he can show them how also to be godly. But at the same time, those people who are sinful, they can also be changed by the association of great devotees. And Narada Muni changed the hunter Magrari. The hunter Magrari was trapping animals and leaving them in traps, suffering very painful death. And Narada Muni came and so by his spiritual power, he convinced Magrari to stop that and to go and to sit and to chant. And gradually, Magrari, next time, he would not even kill little insects on the path. He was so changed by the association of Narada Muni. But it takes some time. 
it's not that immediately everyone can change. You have to be patient. It may take some time. Some people will change quicker. Other people may take more time. But everyone can be benefited by the association and by seeing the good examples. Some people will change quickly and others will take longer. But they can all come because Lord Krishna is in the heart of everyone. And if they hear carefully, then certainly they can be delivered. Sukadeva Goswami describes in the Srimad Bhagavatam, he gives a list about different sinful races and he mentions different sinful races. The verses Kirita, Hunandra, Palinda, Pokaja, Abira, Shumba, Yavana, Kasha, Daya, Yenye, Chapapa, Yadapashraya, Shraya, Sujantita, Smai, Prabhavishna, Venama. He mentions Kirita, Prabhupada said Africans, sinful race, generally, you know. Kirita, Hunandra, Hans means you, and then the Turks and the Greeks, and then also you've got Kash, Kasha is the Chinese. All different sinful races that they can all be delivered by the mercy of the devotee of the Lord. Prabha Vishnu Venamaha. They can be delivered. Take some time, but they can be saved. So we're we're trying to continue that this, give everyone the chance. You know, devotees of Krishna are everywhere. It's not that all oh, these people are Africans, they cannot be the no, there's so many nice African devotees. There's so many nice devotees in every corner of the world. We just have to go and find them. Create the nice atmosphere, attract them give them the chance to become again Krishna conscious. Mami Vamsa Jiva Loke Jiva Buddha Sanatana We are all parts and parcels of the Lord. We have an eternal relationship. And Krishna said, Aham Bija Pradapita Krishna said, I am the seed giving father of all living entities. So everyone can become Krishna conscious. Some people will come more quickly than others. But everyone can become Krishna conscious. Okay. okay. Hare Krishna.